Good morning, folks. We've got an extended Halloween episode as there is dark, deep space news, a scary story about pesticide, and a scarier story for those in the mainstream refusing to respect our star. Let's descend down to spaceweathernews.com, finding a jack-o'-lantern carved by the magnetic forces of a leviathan. He's remained silent. We have no solar flares or lashing out of his filament tentacles, which lie still as Shelley's level sands in Osmandius but for the departing southern limb. For those with the Disaster Prediction app, the low KP drove health alerts and they are building to stronger levels today. We do expect a rapid solar wind shift and end to that advisory tonight or early tomorrow, however, as the coronal hole stream from the southern opening sweeps past our magnetic field. The kinetic alpha waves and IMF have been interacting with Earth for two days already, lifting the quake watch and hopefully we took all the pressure release in New Caledonia. Happened during a minor phi shift and did not produce a tsunami or major devastation. Let's come to the University of Southampton and NASA's rethinking cosmic jets. They had long believed it was the disk size that determined the characteristics of the jet, but now they say it is more likely to be a function of the power of the central object itself. The black hole discrepancies between mainstream and electrical views notwithstanding, this study has taken us away from the disk and that's a point for the electrical. Pretty good link out there from the European Space Agency. They figured out that the more we warm, the faster snow melts, and the faster CO2 is taken up by the plants in spring as they recover faster and faster. It is notable that the bottom March 20 point on the vertical axis should be March 10th, which oddly means they artistically drew the graph instead of using a computer program, which would not have made a mistake on the axis. Moving on. This is Hamburg, Germany. After a strong storm system whipped across central and northern Europe, we have now seen that happen the last two days in Europe and in the United States. More than a million were without power after this system bombed out, underwent bombogenesis, and pounded the northeast. You may have heard that the opposite storm, a winter blizzard, is due for the western Americas this week. Well, starting with the South Pole, you can see that its polar vortex is broken now, splitting and fading. This happens at this time of year every year, and while it's going on over on the north, the polar vortex begins to gain strength rapidly. However, the current weakness, as it's not at full strength yet, is allowing a peripheral stratospheric cell to peel off right down into western Canada and the U.S. That is not wholly unlike a polar vortex event. This upper level pattern is going to reinforce and bolster that winter storm coming in about a day or two there. Folks, we do hit the unnatural news in these programs as they are poisoning the world we cover, and apparently reducing pregnancy levels. Since these can accumulate over time and pass generationally, it is not hard to envision a Children of Men movie scenario, Eat Organic. Now here's a quick replay of yesterday's second video released on YouTube. Meet the young man who could take my job soon if he wanted to. Luckily for me, he's in middle school, he's likely to go on to do far greater things than I, and he hails from a family of observers. If you think he looks familiar, you're right. That's Ferris Walt, age 15, Santa Fe, New Mexico, the one we profiled as an upcoming observer and who was at our 2017 conference back in April showing off his state science fair winning research inspired by the observers into how the sun triggers tropical storm activity via geomagnetism. Bottom curves are the solar coronal holes and the top curves are the number of cyclones on Earth. Nice lag. Nice correlation. We knew that he was going to try to parlay his state-level win into a national championship, and when you are in middle school, there are really only two premier contests. One is the Broadcom Masters. These kids are not playing around, and while a point of pride is had in the fact that two of the 30 national finalists go to school in my hometown, it is far more joyous for this observer and all observers that the young man we said could be the future of solar terrestrial physics has now won the National Middle School Science Competition for doing exactly that. I am hoping to get a copy of the award-winning work as it has surely been updated, and indeed, there was much more than this even from the state level. Main takeaway is this. For years, this type of science has been hypothesized, observed, tracked, and published in layman's terms that we've said many times even middle school students can understand. Turns out, they can do a little more than that, even if NASA, NOAA, and professors across the world still say it's impossible. That won't stop observers from proving them wrong every single day. Congratulations, Ferris Wald. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Folks, if you got the children's book pre-order, your kid's swag is coming in a separate packet, so if you just get one of them first, don't panic. That's how we kept your shipping costs so low. 
Folks, we are about three months from observing the frontier 2018, and not only will the usual space, sun, storm, and quakes be discussed, but these other health topics as well. There's a reason why 70% of tickets have gone to repeat attendees. They know what they're going to get. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.50 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.